Hi, my name is Ty Davis and I'm a technical marketing engineer at GitLab. Today I'm going to be talking to you about agile portfolio management using GitLab and how your organization can build out structure uh, using the GitLab tool to apply enterprise agile to your company. When we take a look here at Healthcare Provider Incorporated, this is a mock organization that I've set up for this demo. What they've done is they've gone in at the parent level, they've uh, applied the Healthcare Provider Incorporated, so they have their organization at that very highest parent level, or maybe it's an application they have at that parent level, and then they have subgroups underneath that, which you can see here is broken down into six different subgroups or six different value streams or specialty areas that they are going to break down their agile teams uh, as a part of. There is one uh, spot on uh, this parent group that is a project, and that's labeled PMO Management. This is where they're going to have board views and be able to do non-functional portfolio um, issues that come up for that parent group level. The way GitLab is broken down is you have groups and you can have subgroups underneath that and then you can have broad projects residing on any of those groups or subgroup levels. When we take a look here at the uh, drop down menu for a hospital subgroup, you can see that it's broken down into several different other subgroups that are going to be making up the agile teams that all will funnel up to making that hospital specialty um, move move along with whatever functionality whatever features or whatever building that that is specific to a hospital value stream as part of healthcare provider incorporated at every group level or subgroup level you have the ability to add in epics and we could see here that um, i could filter via a label in this particular case we have some some strategic themes that the company is looking at, patient satisfaction uh, being one of those, and I can see that I have a, a couple of specific strategic themes that, uh, as a company, we're looking to have better pharmacy turnaround time. Um, maybe we're looking to integrate the the um, the tool Cerner uh, over uh, another tool that we have uh, internally. Uh, there's some ACA compliance that we're looking to um, align ourselves more with, and so we have the ability to create these epics. Uh, at different levels, in this particular case, the parent group level where we created it. Something else that is a great part of GitLab is that you have a roadmap view. Those epics will be applied to this roadmap view, and you have the choice of giving it a start and end fixed date if you'd like, or uh, you can see here on um, one of these, uh, this uh, epic here, that it has a start and finish date that's probably being applied via uh, the time frame giving in a milestone. And we'll go into milestones a little bit later and, and what a milestone is and, and just a, a quick what a milestone is, is it's just a, a time increment where you can give it a start and a finish date. We can apply or create like sprints, sprint one, two, three, four, five, that is a milestone. In this particular case, that's what this is doing for this epic. Going back to the parent group level, we're going to dive into um, one of the subgroups hospital and then uh, we're working on billing here. The billing team is really trying to um, build out this feature that's part of uh, the hospital. And uh, patient billing is one of the projects and one of the, sm uh, the sm smaller scrum or Kanban teams that are doing that. Uh, we have four teams here or four different areas of billing that are, that are being worked on. Patient billing is where we're gonna take a look at and see what this team is doing. Over here, we can go look at the issue list. Um, it gives us a, a running list of issues once it kicks on over to that area. There we go. And we can see that we have a running list of issues that have been created. This is interchangeable with uh, what some know as user stories. The way we do it in GitLab is we have issues. That's how we, um, we classify uh, Things that are being worked on, maybe an enhancement, a feature request, or sorry, not a feature request, but an enhancement request, uh, a fix. All done here in the issues. You can also filter through these um, with the different uh, filter capabilities. Where we're going to go over and spend our time is on the board view. And inside the board view, I can set up several different board views. Uh, what we're doing is uh, first, we're going to do our, our sprint planning. So I have uh, a backlog full of issues. and 
I'm going to start applying, um, taking off my product backlog and putting those issues on specific sprints. So we can see here that we've already done some uh, technical, uh, technical risk assessment, and that is how we've ranked some of our stories. You can see here that it's, we've given weight to a few of them, probably a couple other ones that we need to determine the weight and uh, give that to those issues. But what we could do, start taking these off our backlog, um, we can assign them to a sprint. We're gonna assign these uh, to this specific sprint. Uh, something to note is that you can drag and drop and rank these on the, the open um, uh, lane here, which we are classifying as our product backlog. So we can know, you know what is priority when doing our sprint planning and take from the top of that list. Now that I've, I've done my sprint planning, um, it's time that our team gets working on what's been uh, applied to sprint one. And so I can see here, I've gone over the dev board. I still have a, a running backlog of our whole product backlog. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is um, specify that I just wanna see the issues that are part of sprint one. And it populates that for me. It shows the four issues that I applied to uh, my sprint one as part of that sprint planning. And now the team can either, uh, if we're a self-organizing team or if we're having uh, product owners or product uh, or scrum masters helping us in uh, assigning which issue we're gonna work on, we can have that done here. Because we are a self-organizing team, I'm gonna go ahead and click on an issue. And me, myself, I'm going to assign that to myself. So now I've assigned it to myself. Uh, I'm gonna start working on that and the movement in progress. Let's say a couple other people on the team have done that as well. You know, Dan did it, he moves over to in progress. Um, we can see that uh, DT has the ability as well to move that over and start working on progress. So right now, uh, both Dan and I have started working on our issues. If I were to click on mine, again, you could tell there's no, no weight on it originally. I'll say, hey, this is a weight of, uh, let's give it 15. This is a pretty, pretty heavy uh, changes or uh, additions that need to be made. You do have the ability to um, add different lanes based on uh, how your organization moves uh, issues or user stories through the process. Um, this is very simple in progress and review. And then there is a closed over here. And so once we're going, if I just move over to review, it's gonna automatically uh, update that tag from in progress to review. Uh, if maybe we have it in testing um, or different different lanes that are different um, uh, naming conventions that we want to be a part of the lanes that the process, uh, the workflow that that issue goes through, you can do so. Now, if we want to go take a look at the team board and see who's working on what, we can do so uh, over in the team board view. And we can see that the issues that I assigned to myself and Dan um, was assigned as well are showing here. So if I'm a scrum master uh, and I'm, I'm, you know, taking a look at the team, seeing what they're working at, wanting to um, check on their progress, I can see what issues they're they're working on uh, in this board. And you've already seen a couple of these issues have technical risk around them. That's because we built a technical risk board with some labels of high, medium, and low. And you can uh, move those over left to right, give them a, a technical risk if that's what your organization is doing, and it applies it uh, to that issue. I'm gonna go back to the dev board. Um, we're gonna come back here in a second. One thing I do wanna note is I wanna show you milestones and this is how uh, GitLab defines its start and uh, end in a, a, for a specific time uh, increments. Uh, what we've done, we've built out you know six different sprints here um, so that we can uh, give it a two week sprint time and then we can, uh, as you just saw, assign those issues to uh, specific sprints so we can monitor that and then you have the ability to uh, go inside that sprint and have visibility into a uh, a burn down chart that's going to be based on issue or issue weight uh, not a lot's been done yet inside the sprint so it's not going to be um, you know, trending trending down quite yet You do have uh, labels where you can create these labels here. You've seen that's how we've been uh, doing our organiza uh, organization. So um, you could create those labels here and that's how we built out our board views. If I um, 
Now, I had talked about, uh, I, I assigned this issue to myself and I need to start working on it. I'm going to go into the issue and this is where I'll have information um, more specific uh, to the issue where there could be collaboration done. Um, we can have comments from different people saying, hey, uh, this is needed, this is needed. Some banter back and forth um, to get to the, the finished product that we want. But this is now where I'm tying um, that SCM and that CICD to that project management piece. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to create a merge request. And what this is going to do is it's going to check out a branch off of our master branch. And then I, the developer, can begin working and making changes to that um, code that needs to be changed or fixed or um, additional code added. And I can do that on this checked out branch. Um, I can either uh, just copy and paste this uh, our git command here and go inside my terminal or IDE. I could do it there or inside of GitLab we have a web IDE that you can use from here. And what this is going to do, it's going to pull uh, those source code files. And then you'll be able to go into um, that specific code that you want to change. Um, you can do that. Let's say I was coming in here and just, this is very, very, very simple um, demo. So I'm just changing, uh, making a change to my code. I'm going to go ahead and commit that, stage that, give it a commit message. And then I'm going to commit to, to that, uh, that branch that I just checked out. And once I do that, what it's going to do is it's going to kick off a pipeline. We'll see it's pending right here. See, so you have a couple uh, pipelines already running. Um, if I were to go into that pipeline, let's give it a second here. You can see that uh, the pipeline's kicking off the build. Uh, we have several different stages and jobs that are being um, or that are going to run through that we've set up. We've done this using a, a YAML file that we've set up our our build, test, review, uh, dynamic security uh, performance stages in, and uh, added some jobs to those like code quality, container scanning, dependency scanning, static analysis, uh, some unit testing. It's going to kick off a review app here once we are. Uh, once it runs through these tests and then we can take a look at those changes uh, that have been um, made uh, to that code and we can you know make sure that's really what we want it if i were to go in here and let's take a look at um let's take a look at a pipeline that has run already Um, this one is is uh, ran through all its different jobs. Uh, it's it's done the review um, the review app, and so if we uh, if we go to that, just go to my merge request. We can see that it's it's done a couple things for us. It's gone through. It's done a code quality check. Uh, excuse me, a code quality. Check it's done some security scanning. If I wanted to see if uh, there's vulnerabilities and there were, it'd give me a running list. I could do a full, uh, view a full report. Uh, uh, it'd give me um, some patches to apply if it, it found that there was a fix for some of those vulnerabilities. It's done license management detection. Um, down here, uh, I can see that there's been several changes that have been made. It's going to do the diffs on that and show that to me. Uh, commits. How many commits? There's only been one. It's going to show the pipelines that have run, if they passed, if they failed. Um, and then as I talked about, it's going to give me that uh, that review app, which I'll be able to uh, check the changes on that and make sure it's good to go. And once I believe it's good to go, um, I'll have the ability to uh, delete that source branch and then go ahead and merge that. And once I click merge to master, uh, or I click merge, and it's going to merge it to master, it's going to also kick off um, another pipeline that's going to do some checks as well before it merges that into master. Once this um, 
is merged into master, it will close the issue that's associated with it, so you don't have to worry about going back and closing that issue. So this has been just um, a very high level or very medium to high level quick uh, how to do agile project management. Um, you're doing your issue planning, you're, you're creating your epics and you're setting up the structure of your subgroups, or sorry, your groups and your, uh, um, your agile groups that are falling underneath your different value streams or specialties. Um, we're going in, we're building out our product backlog with issues, we're doing our sprint planning, assigning issues to sprints and then um, your team is coming in and they are uh, picking those issues and they're working on them and they're creating uh, merge or pull requests uh, from that branch that they're checking out from master and then they're going in and making the changes that are necessary they are using the SEM built into GitLab to to um, get their code from the repository make the changes um, once they commit and push uh, those changes then it's going to kick off that auto DevOps pipeline um, using that CICD piece part of GitLab and then um, they're able to um, see if it's passed or failed based on the, the stages and jobs that they built inside that YAML file that helps kick off that CI CD um, process or that auto DevOps process and then um, get those results almost uh, not, almost immediately but very quickly um, and being able to, if it's a failure, going back and making changes that need to be made if it's passed, just merging that into master. Appreciate your time. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to reach out. Thanks.